Road races are supposed to be hard, but not this hard, and certainly not this hard. Last weekend I raced to heck of the north, just north of Toronto. Day one of a doubleheader weekend with a gravel race coming tomorrow. Today I have two teammates with me, Max and Sam, and both are on flying form. Attacks came flying right out of the neutral section, myself included. Just over three kilometers into the race, I threw in a little move and was joined by Sam and Theo de Groot. You're gonna be seeing a lot of his butt today. With some big hitters, this was a dangerous move, but they pulled us back pretty quick. Seeing Theo gave me flashbacks to my first ever gravel race where he got a flat tire, stopped, fixed it, and then caught up to me and dropped me. Only 3k in with a field of 230 riders, it's not going to be that easy to get away. And this race is only 80 kilometers, so it's short enough to go full gas the whole way. Only a few minutes later, Sam finds himself off the front with two other strong riders. This means I get to go into defense mode and just try and shut down other riders who are trying to bridge up to Sam. And poor Theo, I probably chased him down five times today and he was getting frustrated because I was not going to pull through and help him chase down my teammate. We're racing on open roads, which means we have to be aware of traffic, and we got stopped at an intersection for what had to be at least a minute. After that, Sam's group was reported a minute and a half ahead of us. I honestly thought the race was over because we weren't really going that fast and there was not a ton of cooperation to chase them down. At some point it started to rain pretty hard and up ahead a charity rider even hit the deck. Our group was hitting the hills pretty hard and the group was slowly shedding riders. At 55 kilometers into the race there was a short 3 kilometer dirt section. Yes, dirt in a road race, and I knew things were going to heat up there. Max went up the road early with Tommy and I slotted right beside Theo waiting for him to make his move. And when he does, it's a big one. You can faintly see the power on my bike computer I had to do just to follow his move. But at this point, I was dialed in, staring at his wheel. My vision was slowly fading away to dirt-covered glasses. We end up bridging the gap back up to Max and Tommy, but Theo doesn't stop there and he keeps on hammering. But at the top of the dirt sector, we're in a small group of five. Me, Max, Tommy, Theo, and a young Toronto Hustle rider, Hudson. The five of us got along well, maybe too well. I wasn't doing any hard pulls with Sam up the road, but I was pulling through to keep the rhythm going. And we were flying. For the first five minutes out of the gravel, we averaged 49 kilometers an hour, and that includes one major slowdown for cars. I could see riders in the distance, but with all the dirt and water on my glasses, I had no idea if that was Sam's group or riders from the short course. Before I knew it, we could clearly see Sam. We had caught the lead group of three, making it eight riders at the front of the race with 15 kilometers to go. Attacks came flying left and right, and honestly, I don't even think I made it to the front of the group the last 15 kilometers. I was just suffering holding the wheel. With three Ascend riders in this small group, no one wanted to work with us, and Max and Sam were both trying for a breakaway. I'm going to try something new today. I'm going to play the last kilometer of the race straight with no cuts. I'm also going to have some power overlays, so if you like that, let me know in the comments and I can do it more often. The race ends at 83.3 kilometers, so keep an eye on that. Sam attacks out of the last corner, and this is a good move. I should have let this wheel go. I'm already too far up. I'm third position out of eight. I don't want to be sprinting from third. I want to be sprinting from like fifth, sixth, seventh. And that would have forced the people behind me to come over top, work hard to close that gap, or they would have just let Sam go up the road. And honestly, at this point, my legs are pretty cooked. I ended up normalizing 350 watts for the two hour race, which means I'm over my limit at this point. Sam, I think, is also cooked. I think that was his last ditch effort for a result. Now he's just pulling us into the line. Now we eased up and I was trying to look ahead to see where the finish is, but my glasses were so dirty that I could not see anything. And with 600 meters to go, Max sends a long bomb with Theo right on his wheel, and everyone just passes me with so much speed that I can't hop on their wheel and I just hang out in the draft. Keep your eye on Hudson, he's the black and white rider here at the back. You can barely see it, but Theo passes Max, and there's still a long way to go. Tommy hops on Hudson's wheel, and they start gaining, passing Max, and passing Theo. At this point I know I can't win, but I stay in the draft and keep the power going. Looks like Max and Theo's move was a little too early. Hudson edges out for the win, Tommy comes in second place, Max rolls in for fourth, and I'm able to squeak my way through for fifth place on the day. Today was way harder than I expected, but fitting for the name of the race, Heck of the North. Stay tuned for tomorrow's recap of Hell of the North, the gravel version of this race. Hopefully it's not as wet and rainy as today. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.